It's finally official. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Let's get right to the story. Remember when JKS was replaced with Nexa in G2? How everybody was scratching their heads and wondering, what are you doing, G2? Well, short answer was they saved some money and got worse. In the seven months that Nexa was on the roster, Lily won a single event in IEM Dallas with a miracle run in Stewie 2K. Going on a massive rut, their last win before that? August 2023 with JKS. I have Cologne being the venue, G2 needed to shake things up as they haven't won a single event with the roster they've paid for. Let that sink in for a moment. So with Nexa having a 0.98 rating, he played 115 maps for G2 to get that rating. That's not a small sample size. And who might I ask is replacing him? None other than former M80 superstar Mobs MD. The 21 year old Guatemalan rifler being the head of tier two NA orgs, he is flat out dominating 2024 with a 132 rating with a 1.61 impact and a staggering 92.2 ADR. Mobs really could be the number one prospect for tier one at this very moment. But who? Wait, was he not cheap? The rumored buyout was, quote, well over 500k, end quote, USD. And the biggest question will be, is mobs going to be worth it? Short answer is absolutely. freaking lootly As long as G2 do not put him in pit at Dust 2. And speaking of positions, let's look at the clashes he has with Hunter and Nico. With Nuke and Dust 2 not being a problem, Ancient is where things get hairy. Both Mobs and Hunter take middle. Going to Anubis, Mobs takes Hunter's CT mid and Hooksy's canal on T side. And on and on and on. You see where this is going. Roles and positions are going to be changed. That's not even a question at the moment. But for G2, this is where the ultimate test lies. They have a new rising star and they need to be careful where they're going to use him. Mishandling position and role swaps is where they could start Start a dynasty or where things completely fall apart. And for Taz, their coach, he needs to step in during this player break and offer some insight as well. Because right now, so help me, if this ends up being a worse pickup than Nexa, at what point do G2 say screw it and throw in the towel altogether? So G2 have a solidified roster. Done, dusted, confirmed. That's all the moves they're going to be making, right? Uh, let's put a maybe in that one. Because rumors right now are swirling around the CS2 scene that Hooksy will be the next one on the chopping block. With a 0.89 rating and an ADR of a 60.6? Even for an IGL, Hooksy, what are you doing? I stepped in and did just as good as you for our game. Heck with it, look at Hooksy's past 10 games. Only once was he over a 0.90 rating. Almost all of those reds you can see are sub 80s. I get it. You're an IGL. They don't frag as much. But when Sui can go John Wick mode for two months, when Kerrigan can have a good game every so often, heck with it. When Apex can top frag versus G2 twice, that's not a good look for you, Hooksy. Even with Kerrigan having a 0.90 rating and you having a 0.89 rating, I trust Kerrigan far more than you. At this point, you have to start stepping up, which is why the CS2 community is contemplating whether you're staying on G2 or not. And no, Team Liquid is not getting Hooksy. I hope. So with all that said, G2, are you letting Hooksy go? Personally speaking, I think he's going to stay as their IGL until they start seeing better results for 2024. If they start capturing titles, I see no reason past December for G2 to make a move. But if nothing happens and Hooksy's still this underwhelming, they should 100% consider a new IGL. But with all that said, G2's roster is officially... Wait, what? What? Falcons target Nico and Monacy again? Now, Please take this with a lot of grains of salt. But according to eScoreNews.com, link in the description below, Falcons are once again interested in signing the duo. According to the article, the last time they tried to offer Nico, they offered 85,000 euros per month. That's 91 grand USD per month. Now, if this takes place, the reported translation was their IGL Snappy and their star opera son Pius could leave the team if this were to happen. But who would IGL if that did happen? Supposedly Majisk, though I'm unsure if it would be a duo tandem IGL. Still, with this being a crazy rumor, I gotta weigh in here. Whilst yes, that's a huge payment and overpaying for a top tag team duo in Nico and Monacy would be game breaking signing. I don't think this is gonna happen. Overpaying or not, the Falcons haven't had a great record so far and working alongside the org isn't something I think Nico and Monacy want at this time. There's a reason Nico declined them previously and I don't think he's gonna sign with 
with them now. With that being said, if it were to happen, I could think of a North American org that would probably love this. Sun Pius plus Team Liquid. I'm just saying. With all this being said, G2 look to be in a way better place now that Mobs has joined them officially. But please, G2, do not screw this up. Treat Mobs like the player he is. A star. He's dominated you in the past doing things his way. Don't pull another Team Liquid and say you want things done your way. Otherwise, this signing will bite you in the backside. Trust me, it's happened before. Recently. Looking at you, Team Liquid. But what do y'all think? Are G2 in a better place? Will they hang on to Hooksy? Are the Falcons actually going to get Nico and Modesty? Comment down below and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe. It's free and it helps out the channel an absolute ton. Also, if you enjoyed, check out my most recent video on the left and have an epic day. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you in the next one. I'm out. Peace.